It's time to say goodbye to Warzone. I did not think we'd be here so soon, especially considering the fact that Blackout has been allowed to go for this long and will be going past the point that Warzone 1 will be shut down. They put up one of those blog posts on their website talking about it yesterday, but yeah, Warzone is getting shut down in September, which means it'll be the first Call of Duty game or service to actually get shut down, at least in terms of like worldwide releases, like worldwide mainline Call of Duty games. Granted, there's been other like side things and spinoffs that have been shut down before, like Call of Duty Online, for example, which I'm still pretty bad heard about. I wish they bring that back because Call of Duty Online was a lot of fun. But yeah, come September time, we won't be able to play Warzone 1 anymore. Granted, we can still go play the games that were connected to Warzone 1, for example, like Black Ops Cold War, Modern Warfare 2019, Vanguard, obviously, like those servers for multiplayer, zombies, whatever, those will still be online. They try to give a bunch of excuses in that article, but we're not stupid. We know why they're shutting these servers down. They want all of the players that are still playing Cold Era for whatever reason, because I mean, let's be honest, I mean, even though Warzone 1 feels better to play, Play Caldera was not a good Warzone map. And this is coming from the dude that literally only played like maybe, I don't know, 15 matches of Verdansk and then like five matches of Caldera. From my very limited experience, even I can tell you that Caldera was an absolutely terrible Warzone map. I mean, I don't know, having players migrate to the new Warzone, like it makes sense, but like really shutting down such a beloved mode. Because realistically speaking, yes, Warzone 1 technically is just a mode inside of MW 2019, but I mean, I don't know, considering the fact that Warzone is like a whole free to play thing, I mean, Warzone is almost like a game in itself. See, their intentions with this are for like all of those players to migrate to Warzone 2, buy all the new battle passes, buy all the new skins and bundles and stuff like that. But I mean, like in a way, aren't they kind of shooting themselves in the foot? Because what if those players tried Warzone 2, didn't like Warzone 2, so then they went back to Warzone 1, but now that Warzone 1 is getting shut down, maybe they'll just move on to other games. Maybe they'll go play Apex or Fortnite or literally anything besides Warzone 2 because that mode is just an absolute catastrophe. Not only is Activision technically hurting their player numbers, but I'm sure they're also hurting their sales and revenue numbers to a certain extent because like even though warzone 1 is technically outdated at this point and it's not getting any new bundles i'm sure there was players that are were still playing it paying for bundles and plus you got to remember the fact that cod points actually do transfer between all of the games whether that be mw20 i mean like the cod points that you purchase now you can go back and use on black ops 3 or the cod points you purchase on black ops 3 can be used now like it, it goes across all of the call of duty games that have cod points inside of them so you have to think to a certain extent they're probably hurting their sales no maybe they think it'll balance out once all the players leave Warzone and be like, well, we need our Warzone fix, and then they'll go and play Warzone 2, which then raises another question. Are Warzone's numbers hurting so bad that they need to shut down Warzone 1 to bring those players here? Like, are they that desperate for numbers, or is this just them doing everything that they can to bolster their numbers as high as physically possible? They also mentioned in that article that Warzone Mobile, I, I, I mean, they keep, like, pushing this thing, so I guess that that's actually going to be coming relatively soon, and they mentioned it's going to have, like, cross-progression with battle passes and, like, levels and XP and stuff like that, so I'm sure that the bundles that you can purchase inside of Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 are going to be also like cross, I don't even know what you call that, but like able to be used in mobile and vice versa. In the article, they try to phrase it like it's a good thing. They were like, you know, once we shut down Warzone 1, then we'll have more hands and, you know, budget on deck to work on Warzone 2 and make it the best possible experience. It's like, dog, y'all weren't even doing for anything for Warzone 1 anyway. There hasn't been any updates released for Warzone 1. It's all been for Warzone 2. Warzone 1 is done. You know, it's done. It's complete. The updates and content are there. That's that. Nobody was having to do anything for it besides paying to keep the servers online for and you may be like thinking to yourself like well that makes sense right they you know they do they why waste the money paying for those servers when they can instead invest the money on working on the new warzone 2 but my counter argument to that is the fact that they literally never shut down cod servers you can go back and play call of duty 1 right now those servers from 20 years ago are still online that game came out in 2003 and you can still go play on those servers from 20 years ago yeah warzone 1 is what like three years old at this point so it's definitely not a money. I mean, we should know it's not a money thing. Activision is literally wiping with Benjamins at their headquarters, let's be honest. I don't know. This whole thing just came off as, eh, I don't know, like a little scummy, especially considering the fact that, you know, when most people paid for the bundles back in like Vanguard, MW 2019, and Cold War, like, sure, you have the ability to use them in the games that they were technically designed for. Like, you can go and use your bundle skins in Vanguard or Cold War or whatever. But a lot of, not all players, but a lot of players were specifically buying those skins just so they could 
use them in Warzone. But now for the players that bought them for that specific purpose, they won't even be able to use that for the purpose that they purchased it for. And possibly if they were, if they purchased those bundles inside of Warzone, now they can't even use like the bundles that they made hundreds and hundreds of dollars for inside of the game that they bought it for. They can only use those skins inside of the full premium titles that they may not have even paid for in the first place. And again, they explicitly stated in the article, yeah, you're not going to be able to bring any of that over to Warzone 2. Like any skins or any bundles or any content from Warzone 1, yeah, none of that's going to be transferable over to Warzone 2. Not even the camos. You know, it would be nice if we could at least like access it. You know, if it's not in MW2 multiplayer, that would make sense. But like say in Warzone 2, they gave you the ability to use Damascus, use ZM Ultra, use Dark Ether, use Atomic. But nope, they're not even letting you do that, which, you know, I feel like that would at least be the bare minimum. I mean, if they're not going to let us use our skins, at least you let us use the things that we worked so hard to unlock. But no, I guess not. Now, I'm sure I've made it pretty obvious at this point. I really couldn't care less about Warzone 1. I barely played Warzone 1, and I quite literally just really haven't played Warzone 2. I played a couple of matches, but like, I I don't even know the maps. Yeah, the fact that Warzone 1 is getting shut down, I mean, personally, as a player, I truthfully couldn't care less. But like, in terms of the overall community and that player base, like, I truthfully feel for you guys. That would be the same as if they went back and said, hey, you know, we're shutting down zombies and multiplayer on Cold War and Vanguard. Like, I'd literally be on here flipping out right now because of how much time and money I've sunk into both of those modes. I mean, I haven't really paid for bundles, but I mean, I paid for the battle passes. I grinded out all the camos. So I can only imagine how those players that grinded all that stuff out for, for Warzone 1 feel right now. So I'm making this video for two reasons. One, just to bring awareness to the fact that, yeah, if you want to get in a few last matches of Warzone 1, then you better do so because not even three months from now, we won't even be able to access the mode or any of the bundles inside of the mode that we paid for the bundles for. And furthermore, just to bring awareness and maybe get some pushback going against this shutdown, like, well, like, why is this even being shut down? Like, the reasons for shutting it down don't even make any sense because it's such a contradictory thing when you realize how many other Call of Duties that are much, much older by literal decades are still online, including one of their own previous Battle Royale modes, that being Blackout from Black Ops 4. I don't know, Activision's gonna Activision, you know how it goes at this point. And again, I don't even know what the incentive is behind this. I don't know if they're doing this because Warzone 2's numbers are hurting, which I wouldn't think to be the case. I mean, Warzone 2 is still very popular. So if anything, I'm pretty sure this is them just ringing it out for everything that's worth getting as many players on here as possible, even if it means killing their prior games just to make their current game have more players, even though this current game is going to be irrelevant in literally not even four months when the new game releases. <laughs> Man, originally I wasn't even like planning to grind out Modern Warfare 2 this weekend. I was just going to hop on my Nintendo Switch and play some cozy games. But then they went ahead, we got double XP, double weapon XP, double battle pass XP. You still got the event going crazy. And you know, as much as I really don't care about doing the war zone parts of this event, I at least want to get enough medals to get like this cool little like rubber ducky charm. I'm still pretty salty about the fact that they didn't give a shoot house for the double XP weekend. If I could use that to get my long shots done right now, oh my gosh, I would be swimming in XP. It would literally be perfect because then I would have some sort of incentive to grind. But at this point, you know, I could play on the new map and try to go on long shots, but that's so inconsistent and I just really don't like that map anyway. So, yeah. so at this point, I've just got two long days of shipment ahead of me just grinding this nonstop. Right now, I'm only at like 10% through the battle pass and there's only 39 days left of the season already because this one got shot like it got its length shortened by like a week for some reason. I'm pretty sure it's because earlier in the game's life cycle one of the other seasons got either delayed or extended for some reason. So now they're just kind of making up for lost time which you know the, the fact that they gave us a double XP weekend already you know I'm willing to excuse it and they usually give us really big double XP weekends during Independence Day weekend and this time Independence Day falls on a Tuesday so it's probably going to go from that Friday through that Tuesday into Wednesday. So heck if I can get on here and knock this out maybe grind out like 15 to 20 tiers a day between this weekend and next weekend, I could have my battle pass finished if I go hard enough. Especially if they give a shoot house next weekend and I can get all that XP from all the camos. Oh man, I'll, I'll be all set. The perfect storm for me at this point would literally just be shoot house 24-7 so I can go in, get my 300 long shots, and then shipment 24-7 so I can go in, and then after that, get all the headshots that I need because after that, then I'll have Orion and I'll, I'll be free. I'll admit the Orion grind definitely hasn't been as tedious or as bad in general as some of the other grinds. My most enjoyable grind up to this point definitely was DM Ultra and Cold War, or at least it was until now. Now I can definitely say, out of all the camos that I've gone for, MW2 was definitely the most enjoyable because it brought me the least mental distress. Some of those challenges in Cold War, especially for like the launchers, was just a bit too much for me. But like, you know, overall, I would definitely say that if I had to choose one camo to go for again, it would be Orion. But you know, DM Ultra is a close second because that one wasn't as bad. As long as we never get a Call of Duty game that has the same camo challenges as like MW 2019 or Vanguard ever again, I'll be happy. I think Vanguard might have been the worst getting 70 weapon levels and then getting like hundreds of long shots I, I don't know at the same time the challenges overall weren't too bad it mainly was just the weapon levels on the long shots mw 2019's was even more tedious because 
all we had for long shots on that game was like shoot house at least in vanguard we had das house which was like a really fast way to get long shots but in mw 2019 oh god i keep telling myself i'm gonna go back and get damascus at some point but i just i i really don't want to but at the same time i've already sunk like 300 hours into sitting on shoot house just relying on it's not even like necessarily rng but it kind of feels like rng as to whether or not players are actually gonna like get on the ledge so i can get my long shots done i don't know i'm still pretty indecisive about that one i might go back one day i might not either way i don't know honestly if all of these games still had cross progression like they did before because you know before like during vanguard and cold war and mw 2019's life cycles like you could play any of those games and still be progressing towards your battle pass and your xp levels and stuff like that but now they've just removed that but you know it makes sense because obviously there was a lot of times where like some of the battle pass rewards would like bleed into the other games and then there was like the whole messy integration with warzone so it was just kind of like a cluster so they wanted to do like a refresh but i wish they still had at least like some sort of form of cross progression there just so that i could at least go back play those games finish those camos and then not feel like i'm like necessarily wasting my time because while grinding out the camos would be enough of a reward for me i would still also have that lingering feeling in the back of my head like man i could be grinding out mw2 xp or battle pass xp right now i've seen a bunch of people playing x define i'm actually pretty excited for that game i don't know if it's one that i'm necessarily gonna take on like full on call of duty is really like the only live service game that i keep up with and i just i couldn't be asked to keep up with what more than one live service game because one live service game is honestly more than too much nowadays like don't get me wrong i can keep up with everything in mw2 in terms of leveling up the battle passes and the xp levels and stuff but i mean i haven't been able to keep up with like everything like i haven't done all the raids and dmz i haven't done all the events in warzone like i i like if i was trying to interact with every aspect of this game like multiplayer dmz warzone and whatever other modes they have in the game like all the new co-op missions and stuff dude i would literally just be living and existing on mw2 at that point there was so much content in this game if you interact with like all of it which i feel like that was part of activision's goal too because there's a lot of players that are like man there's not enough content in mw2 but really there's actually more content that we even know what to do with if you choose to interact with all the modes but like like i get where people are coming from like when you focus on each individual mode yeah some some of the modes are kind of lacking in content or they could use a little bit more but like when you look at mw2 as an entire package yeah it's literally bursting at the seams for me though i'm cool with just playing multiplayer leveling up my battle pass leveling up my levels like that's my live service fix i, I don't need to interact with everything i don't need to have that one game that i play for the rest of my life or you know all day every single day until the next cod comes out i'm cool with just play the multiplayer get my paddle pass done grinding some camos and calling that that all these live service games keep evolving but man my headspace is still back in 2012 i'll hop on i'll grind the xp i'll get the camos done but don't expect me to live on this game as much as i love call of duty man i got a backlog with like thousands of other games i gotta beat before i die man i've been making sure i keep up with all the limited time events though like all the cool camos they put in the game like i really like that winds of ash one and then this one i don't even remember what the name of it is but this one looks sick even though i'm not even finished with orion yet i really do hope that they put more mastery camo grinds in the game like this because i truthfully do have a lot of fun going for it. like you know sometimes i kind of you know talk it up a bit like oh man gotta get these camos done but like i genuinely do enjoy the grind i enjoy that checklist mindset of like cha-ching there's another camo and then when you complete an entire class of gold and you unlock platinum and then you unlock the thing after that you know with like polyatomic and then you complete all those challenges and get a ride like i enjoy that mindset i enjoy that like gameplay loop but considering that my time with the orion grind is coming to an end yeah i actually would really like to see some more of these events coming into the game and i mean sure when my time with orion is up i could go back and complete all the other weapons that i didn't actually get like gold or platinum or poly because like i'm not trying to get every single gun in the game orion but i mean hey if i'm desperate enough for xp or if i just want something to do then maybe like at this point i don't even need to touch the launchers or the sniper rifles i yeah I'll, I'll be good as it is i'll be able to just finish up the camos that i'm doing i won't even have to touch a single sniper rifle or launcher i i think i might go back to at least do the sniper rifles i'm not too sure about the launchers though anyways yeah i don't know i just kind of wanted to hop on here talk about the sad state of warzone 1 which is you know basically extinct at least soon i'm definitely interested to hear from you guys like do you guys still play warzone 1 are you kind of sad about this are you just going to move on to warzone 2 like uh well what's your plan of action after warzone 1 gets shut down do you not even interact with warzone like me anyway whatever it is whatever you're thinking i definitely love to hear from you guys but anyway as always a massive shout out and thank you to all of my patrons thank you to all of you in the one dollar tier and an even bigger shout out and thank you to all of you in the big ball tier mellow last king and big daddy maddie and the biggest shout out and thank you of to all of you in the G tier, Ride and Vengeance and Little Cheese Girl. You guys are literal legends. Thank you. I love you. Thank you guys for watching. Have an amazing day. Stay beautiful. I love you all. Peace.